everyone, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Happy Pride Month, everyone. I kind of attempted like a buy Pride makeup look today, but I don't really have a lot of pink eyeshadow. Like, I don't know if you can, there's a little bit of pink in there. I don't know if you can see it. But even if you can, I still think I kind of failed the prompt here. But you know, I'm bi and I did the makeup, so I think it counts as bi makeup. But anyway, for this video, I am going to be making my first Pride-specific doll that I've ever made. Because, you know, I'm the kind of person that makes gay stuff all year round. And so when Pride rolls around, I don't really think to make anything special for it. But you know, this is my first Pride Month being a person who makes videos on YouTube. And so I thought I should get the tradition rolling, you know, start my collection of Pride dolls on this channel. And I, I think that'll be fun. And I am so excited to show you what I made this year. So let's get into it. So our candidate for this makeover is Barbie Extra number 10. She was on sale and I really liked her hair, so I had to get her. So to start off, I'm removing her face and then I get right in with acrylic paint for her face up. So I'm not intimately familiar with cyber goth fashion, so I did look up references for this doll. And every time you Google cyber goth now, you get that video of the people dancing underneath the overpass, which I love. So that was playing in my head constantly while I was working on this doll. And you know what's kind of sad is, you know what tab I had open way more than my cyber goth references during the course of this whole makeover? The colors of the bi pride flag. I couldn't for the life of me remember what shade each color was. And I think I'm still wrong. <laughs> by the time everything is finished. But you know, I feel like, I think in the end, the vibes are still there. I guess that's up for you guys to decide if I if I captured the colors correctly or the essence, but you know, I tried. I don't know why my brain refused to hold on to that information. So I've been really enjoying painting like Barbie face molds lately. Like, I originally, like many doll artists, I think, was primarily like a Monster High gal, but I just really have been liking Barbie lately, but it sucks because I don't have a bunch of Barbies in my stock box right now, so just know that I'm, I'm thinking wistfully about painting Barbies at all times. So we need to pause here for a minute because I'm sure you could tell that there is a huge jump in progress from this shot that you're looking at to the one that you just saw. And that's because I discovered this morning that the video file that contained the other half of this face up got corrupted and was unusable and is lost forever. And so, oh wow, my eye fully started twitching. It was a, it was a very rough morning, but I'm so happy with how her face came out. I wish you could have seen the whole process. But you know, let's let's just move on to her outfit before I explode. One crucial element of many cyber goth looks is fishnets. Fishnet tops, fishnet sleeves, fishnet stockings, just fishnets all over the place. And so my girl needed to have fishnets everywhere. So here I'm making a sort of top to go underneath her actual top so I'm just sort of cutting a hole for her head and sliding it over it's sort of like one of those jerseys that they would give you in school why am I playing with the hole for so long girl what are you doing anyway you just slip it over her head and it almost reminds you of one of those jerseys they would give you in PE class during like you know games or whatever and because this is going underneath another you know garment I'm just like hot gluing it down because I found that at doll scale it's kind of hard to make fishnets look right and sort of like stretch over the body because they're so small and so like gluing it down and sort of like stretching it yourself and forcing it to be that way sort of has been what works best for me. So now that her fishnet undershirt is done, we can get into her corset. So no one is allowed to judge my 
pattern making technique here yes that is a very old grocery store advertisement i think that's ham i'm not entirely sure but i trace out her body and like kind of do the basic shape of the like corset that i want and like do whatever like extra seams that i want to do and i cut it in half and then just sort of mirror it whenever i go to trace it and yes would it be more practical to maybe use a sturdier paper when you're trying to make something that you're going to be tracing later yeah but you know i have a bunch of newspaper that i don't use so here's how it looks when it is all traced out like it worked out fine see even though the the newspaper is a little jank and here's how the pieces look cut out and it is absolutely necessary to make sure you drop them and I hand sewed these bits together because I, I'm afraid of technology. I have a sewing machine, but I've never sewn pleather before. So I also cut out extra like side panel pieces because it wasn't quite wide enough. Like a lot of this was just sort of like, you know, feeling it out every step of the way. And I had to cut a slit in each of these extra side pieces so that it can sort of like fold over each other and become flush. And then you can sew these little rectangle bits to your newly flush side pieces. If you guys ever want me to do like a more in-depth like corset tutorial, like let me know because I have a couple of methods. Um, and if I were to do a tutorial, I feel like I would use a fabric that is easier to see. Um, but after you do that, you just sew her into it. If you're really fancy, you could probably get like tiny little um, rivets or whatever and lace it up properly. But I don't have fancy little dudes, so I just have to sew it up with some embroidery thread. And uh, mild spoilers, like it's a little rough in the back, but what's most important is getting the shape right. So. You know, you just have to pull it extra tight and do what you can to make sure, you know, the front is what matters the most anyway. So as long as it looks good from the front, you're, you're, you're doing fine. So here's how it looks all sewn on. Like I said, it's a little bit rough in the back, but I think it looks good from the front. And I just sort of go over the white thread with Sharpie to like a mixture of adding a little bit of detail to the seams as well as covering up the white thread because I basically only own white thread. All right, sue me. So now I am making her stockings. And so I did kind of a similar thing like I did for the shirt, except it's just like a tube. I did try to sew these, okay? Because typically for like socks and stockings, I like to sew them just because it, it looks better. But it, uh, it, it was basically impossible to do. Like I, I was going insane and running out of time and I was like, I don't have time to, to deal with with this so it got glued i'm i'm sorry i i think it still looks fine once again we're following the rules of it looks great from the front and you know most people you put a doll on a shelf and its back is to the wall and you aren't looking back there anyway if, if you're looking at the back of a doll you're a hater <laughs> So I also add a little bit of glue to the front just to ensure that like they don't slide down anywhere and like as you can see on the other side it's going to get covered up so it's fine. And the thing I use to cover this up, you're going to see a trend in a lot of my work where I don't have a lot of colors of things so I just sort of make whatever I have work. Um, I basically only ever buy new supplies for commissions because in those cases I uh, someone's paying me to make something specifically so I need to get the right materials but for anything that I'm doing just of my own volition I just make it work with whatever I have so I use this pink ribbon and I use a sharpie to color it in usually I'll use like paint 
but for this case I want to sort of maintain some of that shininess so I use a sharpie and I'm also going over the hot glue in the back with it just so it like blends in a little bit more so maybe it looks like it's like a weird like design back there because you know how sometimes like stockings do that I don't know I'm just trying to justify my choices <laughs> And I use the same method to also make these little like sleeves for her as well because like I said we need fishnets everywhere baby. So now I'm making her skirt. So I used this like lace I got on clearance a while ago. I thought it had sort of like a neat texture to it. And I'm just pleating it because a lot of the reference images that I saw like cyber goth girls will wear sort of like pleated skirts like they there's a bunch of different designs but uh, I've seen a lot of the really cute art had pleated skirts all right so that's what I wanted to do so one bit of advice I will give you if you're like me and want to buy the least amount of supplies possible and then get the most use out of the supplies that you do get get plain white lace ribbon preferably this sort of wider one that way you can you know cut it in half or cut it into little strips if you need it for something smaller and you can because it's white it's a blank canvas so you can make it any color you want and i get so much use out of this stuff y'all like i cannot overstate how useful it is and this one i'm making this sort of gradient skirt from black to the bi pride flag colors and I think it came out really cute. It kind of reminds me of something I would have bought from Hot Topic like 10 years ago and unapologetically wore to school because I was... We're not going to talk about Randy's middle school fashion choices at this time. And here's the skirt complete. And I made her little shorts. That way you couldn't see her butt under there because you can sort of see underneath it. The next thing I need to make is her little fur leg warmers because that is another crucial element of cyber goth fashion, at least when you're going with the silhouette that I am. And you may notice that I started out with white fur for this because, yes, I mostly buy white craft supplies. That way you could just dye them for whatever color purposes you need. And here they are finished. And for her shoes, I decided to use the shoes that she came with because I thought they were already, you know, like... They're just edgy enough and you're not really going to see them because the fur covers them anyway. So I'm just painting them black so they don't stick out like a sore thumb. And Bro, what is going on? Dude, my computer's haunted. So now that the spookiness has subsided, I can finally start working on her choker. So this is actually the most elaborate choker I've ever made. I did a sort of like double layered look, the second one having this jump ring on it. And I'm actually trying a new technique that I've, I've thought about before that I, I just feel like it should work. And I think it does. So I'm making like little faux metal stud spikes to go on her collar. So I'm just cutting off the tips of these toothpicks and I'm painting the metallic silver and I'm gluing them around the choker. And like, obviously it's not super realistic. Like you can tell that it's not actually metal, but like from a distance and considering that it's a doll, I feel like it works because you know, you're not always going for hyper realism, you know? And some of us can't afford to get hyper specific craft supplies, like tiny little metal studs. Though one day I think it'd be really cool, but you know, Country girls make do. So now her shoes are dry and I could put them on her feet. And here is the shoe leg warmer combo. And now I can start working on her hair. So the entire time I was working on this project, I was waiting to get to her hair. I was so excited for it. And I don't know why I love this clip. And I don't know why it's so funny me trying for so long to get like the perfect two little braid tendrils to frame her face. But I just think it looks really funny. <laughs> But now that that's out of the way, I made the discovery that there was even bigger gaps between her braids than I thought there was going to be. But I was planning on adding extra yarn strands anyway, just because cyber goth hairstyles are always like really big, at least from what I've seen. And so honestly, there being huge gaps just made it easier for me to sort of add these in. So I just parted the braids and glued these yarn strands to like any place where there is like significant baldness. It took a very long time 
but this is the final result of her hair i am i i think it's so cute y'all like i think it's the fav my favorite hair that i've ever done it's just pigtails but it's so effective and now we're in the home stretch. Like now I'm just adding like her finishing accessories and we're done. I am going to take this time to thank you for watching and to plug my store. It will be in the link in the description and just about everything that you see me make on this channel, unless it is a commission, will likely be available for purchase on my store at some point because I need money for supplies. <laughs> as we all well know from this video and uh, this doll will also be made available for purchase upon my uploading of this video the link to my instagram is also in the description you can dm me there or through depop if you're interested in commissioning me because i also do that while i'm doing my calls to action i'm going to take this opportunity to say if you've watched this far consider subscribing i upload every tuesday sometimes in between you know i make doll repaint videos i do other art stuff and i have a bunch of stuff that i have planned that i'm so excited to share with everyone and if you don't want to miss any of that go ahead and subscribe and if you had fun like this video comment tell me what you think i would love to hear it but mostly if it's nice don't be mean to me a quick break from self-advertisement to say I made these little goggle pieces out of hot glue and jump rings. I glued them to her headband to sort of create this like goggle moment because a lot of cyber goth looks have little goggles and I thought this would be a, a good shorthand for that. And with that, she is done. Here is the final result. I love her. That's it. I love her so much. Like. I, I feel like I say this every time I get like so excited about the way things come out, but genuinely she's, I, I keep, she's on my shelf and I keep staring at her. I think she's so cute. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope to see you next time. Love you. Bye. Oh, happy pride. <laughs>